They say the only real mistake is one from which we learn nothing that's from. And that's definitely true when it comes to e-mountain biking. Plenty of mistakes that you can make when you're out and about on that ride. And I've definitely made a few of them. So here's a few things you definitely don't want to be doing when you're out on those e-bike rides. Yep, those lycra-clad tarmac terrorists hate anyone overtaking them, particularly if it's got two wheels. And if you've got that assistance of an electric motor, it can become quite tempting, especially on those long climbs. But I wouldn't bother unless it's a very, very long climb and you can get away uh, easily. But if it's flat or it goes slightly downhill after this climb, then you're gonna stand no chance, purely because air bikes have got bigger gearing and can allow them a higher top speed. You're gonna be stuck on your speed limiter, pedaling round like a madman, or I say simply cruise on by. Don't waste your energy. Now, if you're out and about with mountain bikers, it can be quite tempting to cross some pretty deep water, maybe some deep rivers or some ford crossings. And the thing is, all they have to worry about is getting the bottom bracket bearings wet. But of course, you've got a motor and a battery down there and they don't take kindly to getting dunked in water. You need to think wisely here. If it's deeper than the bottom bracket, get it up on your shoulder and carry it across. It's definitely not worth the risk. Oh my God. <laughs> now your e-mountain bike is designed to be ridden 99% of the time, not pushed and definitely not carried on your bike. Hiker bike is not fun with an e-bike. I've been there on a Scottish island and ridden, well, 20% of the island and hiked a bike for the remaining 80%. It still gives me nightmares to this day. Now, if you are going on a route, you definitely need to plan that route wisely and make sure what you are planning to ride is rideable. As I mentioned, hiker biking definitely isn't fun. Whoa. <laughs> Now you can find yourself on the side of the trail working on your bike, maybe you've got a puncher or your chains come off, something like that. And it's all too easy to start working on your bike with that power still switched on. And if you don't turn that power off, it can cause the motor to start and maybe trap your fingers, particularly if you're working on that drive train area. So remember, if you're not riding it, keep it switched off. And the same goes for lifting your bike. If you come to a stop and you need to lift your bike up, say, over a stile or a gate or something like that, remember to turn that power off. Again, if you clip a crank whilst you're lifting it, it can engage that motor, maybe trapping your fingers or your clothing into that drive train. Now using too much turbo definitely has its downsides too. If you're doing those bigger rides, it's really gonna eat into your range. And you and your bike are gonna feel really sluggish if you just use turbo. Get used to those lower power assist modes. And lastly, on those cold winter rides, if you stay out of turbo and you use a lower power mode, you're definitely gonna stay a lot warmer. But don't forget, if turbo is used in the right places, you can definitely do some amazing things. Not like that. Oh, and one last thing, if you are carrying a spare battery in your backpack and your battery is locked into your bike with the means of a key, don't forget to pack the key because if you ride around with a flat battery in your bike and they're fully charged when expecting to change it, it can definitely put a dampener on the ride if you haven't got that key. And that's from personal experience. So there we have it, a few things you should definitely not be doing out on your e-bike ride. But if we left anything out, get involved in the comments box down below. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN. And whilst you're there subscribing, hit that merch shop, get in there and find a load of great deals.